Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. If this is your first time, you know, welcome aboard. But today we are going to cover PvP and specifically PvP team building, alright? We're going to go over some tips and hopefully this turns into a guide. So let's jump right into things. You can see right here, I created a handy dandy Google spreadsheet. And just note that PvP is mostly dictated by team synergy, alright? That's the thing that I want to talk about most. Do not look as power as being an indicator of a good team because honestly stars matter a lot more and stars are not usually accounted into power. All right, let's go ahead and make this into a proper size and let's go ahead and talk about some units. All right, one of the first things that I feel that every team should need is either Monica or Kokoro. These, I'm gonna call them speedsters or essentially speed buffers, all right? Monica and Kokoro are super special because they're the only ones I believe currently in the game that can do it. Of course, more will be added in the future. And if you know more, please let me know because I would like to use units outside of these two. And note that pretty much why speed is so important, it's just like any other gacha game where speed dictates how fast you cast skills, how fast you cast your union burst. So it can be the difference between you getting an attack off or not and you already know if you can get your union burst in front of someone else's you are definitely going to deal some more damage and that could lead to a win all right next thing is going to be tanks now i did an observation on top 10 but let's go ahead and cover these tanks first now rima is a special tank in pvp the reason why is because she can cluster the units so for example, if you run her, everyone will start congregating into the center because she arrives late. She is SS tier on the PvP tier list, but believe it or not, in JP because of her ability to cluster units, making it so that when you AoE, you hit a pretty much a broader amount of opponents opposed to just hitting just the middle row or just hitting just the back row. So clustering opponents is a really big deal for her. Next is going to be Nozomi. Nozomi has the taunt and she's pretty good. What was really interesting was Miyako was the most powerful or not most powerful, but the most popular tank in the top 10. And it probably has to do with the fact that folks who run like defensive teams or physical defensive teams will pretty much get stumped by Miyako because her physical defense is outrageous. Just note that no one has raised Rima yet because I believe they don't really leverage her cluster ability that much in current arena, but in the future, she'll be really good and she's by far the best PvP like tank when she gets to six star, right? It's gonna be a while until, you know, everyone starts using her and starts building her because it takes more investment. But for the most part, just note that she makes AoE much better. Honestly, I only saw one, so she wasn't as popular as I thought she was going to be. It was honestly between Miyako and Nozomi. I saw no Rima and Peko in top 10. Next thing is going to be Defense Breakers. Now, these people are going to be important if you run a physical comp team. So, oh, I need to correct this. There is a magical booster, actually, and that's going to be Akari down there you can see her right here but anyways let's go back to defense breaks so pretty much if you run someone like nino or reno or ninon and renon like these two right here you are going to benefit from physical like death breaks the only problem with physical damage in pvp is that you can be blinded so some people like to use yuki because she can blind opponents and you can essentially miss so physical attacks have a chance to miss whereas magical attacks don't miss and that's why magical meta is so much better. And not to mention a lot of people are raising, you know, people like Miyako. So it co counters technically Miyako meta because, you know, these mages will pretty much destroy her because she has like no, well, she has some magical defense, but not enough to like, you know, stop her. But pretty much that's what these death breakers are for. Honestly, you can run one, but with the magical meta, it's not as necessary. And technically, Yuki is really good. She's top tier in JP still. You can technically run Shinobu or Mitsuki, but the problem is, is, you know, they're not the greatest. They do all right for the most part, but eventually they fall off. Just note that Shinobu is like higher rated because she can provide buffs in the future. Mitsuki right now is actually pretty good because she can get around Miyako's like, you know, insane defense. Her curse does true damage. So it's a amount of damage that won't get, you know, affected by her physical defense or any defenses. So that's super cool. 
The only issue with running Makoto as your AoE defense break is she's in the front. Shinobu and Mitsuki are in the middle and then Yuki is in the back. So her being in the front makes her prone to like large amounts of damage. So honestly, she's just not that recommended for PvP. Fantastic for clan battle though. Fantastic for clan battle. Mages. They dominate arena right now and there is nothing that's going to stop them because they don't miss and they deal lots of damage. When I was observing the top 10, each person pretty much had either Hatsune or Ayo or maybe even Anna or a combination of Hatsune, Anna and Ayo or Hatsune, Hatsune and Anna, Ayo and Anna. It was nuts. Like these three, they were everywhere. Like they are powerful. If you have one of these three, apparently it can be in like top 10 or top 50 arena because they are that busted. I have nothing to say about them other than like they are just really, really good for PvP. And if you have one of these three, you have a chance at being really strong in PvP because they are pretty unstoppable. Except for Anna, just because of the fact that she reduces her own defense to zero. But honestly, she does a lot of damage. It doesn't matter if she does it if you one-shot your opponent. Honestly, if you have these three on the team and they all do their ults at the same time, the team's practically dead. So why does defense matter anyways? All right, Akari, she is the only magical defense break in the entire game and she can also boost magic. So if you run Hatsune or Ayo or Anna or a combination of the three, you might want to run Akari if you feel like you need a boost in magical, you know, attacks and, you know, do a little bit of magic defense down. But honestly, these three probably do so much damage, well, specifically Hatsune and Anna, that you probably don't need Akari. But if you want a little boost, you know, Akari's there. Not to mention she can provide a little bit of lifesteal with her Union Burst, which is super interesting. Very, very unique character in our current meta. Next thing is going to be AoE physical attack. And we already talked about this. If you're going to run an AoE physical attack, you definitely need a defense breaker. But honestly, I didn't see like too many people running them. I saw like one Ninon, but honestly it was, it's just weird knowing that they're just not effective because if a lot of people are going to run Miyako within the top 10, then why bother running, you know, a P attack person because Miyako is going to completely stump them. But then again, if you run like an AOE physical attack person, you absolutely obliterate, you know, mages because they have like no defenses. It's kind of like a double-edged sword, you know, you kind of pick your poison. But honestly, there is just like so many hot sinews. You'll see them, you'll see them. Anyways, let's go into the next thing. Single physical attack. I saw Tamaki a lot, like at least three times. And then I saw Digita like once and I saw Akina once. Honestly, all of these, they don't exist. They don't matter. They suck because <laughs> it, it, it's sad to say they suck because pretty much what happens is they only hit one person, right? They miss. You can miss if you get blinded. The thing is with Jita is she can boost her own TP. Tamaki is specific to killing mages, so she absolutely destroys like Hatsune, Ayo, and Ana. And then Akino, I'm not sure what she does, so I'm not really gonna give my opinions on her, but she was there once on a physical team. It was super interesting. I'll probably look into why. All right, the supports are going to be Maho, Yukari, and Saren. Now I am missing one and I want to add her because I saw than her once and that's going to be Shizuru all right I want to add Shizuru because she was in a couple of teams for top 10 and she's definitely she's not a TP booster but she is like you know she can support for the most part barriers because she can definitely provide barriers that can help quite a bit Shizuru now just note that Maho I would say is one of the most popular characters Yukari was not there as much as I thought she was going to be I actually saw like more Maho and more Saren, and Saren is absolutely useless by herself, but with someone else, she's absolutely amazing because she provides insane buffs, she can do TP boosting, she's just an overall great like support character that you can like tap on the team. And the next thing is going to be like team comps that I thought were good, but honestly after seeing top 10, it makes me really doubt it. But anyways, this is the free to play team with Peko, Yukari, Kokoro, Carol, and Yui. Honestly, all of them need to be at 2-star to properly function in later arena, but for the most part, you can use them, you know, until you build up a better team. Now, this budget team that I'm about to show you, you can technically use this. Instead of Yui, you can technically use Yuki, 
But the thing is, Akari doesn't fit here whatsoever because no one's providing like magical buffs. Now that I look at this team, it's actually kind of not good. I would honestly replace her with someone else. And Mimi is just there. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna do it on the fly. Because I was looking at some of the teams and it really opened my eyes, you know, just viewing top 10. And then the way they do things is just it makes so much sense. And it's also surprising. None of them use boosters, like speed boosters, I mean. So that's kind of interesting in my brain, but you know, it is what it is, right? For the most part, I don't think that Yui should be used. I'm just using her because I'm assuming you don't have that many units. Honestly, like it would probably be best to run another like AoE DPS or maybe like someone like Carol. Just so you can have some more diversity. Heals don't really matter too much in like arena because honestly in arena it's all about who can one shot someone else or aoe someone else faster than the other so yeah there's that you could technically replace mimi with akari but mimi's super cool because she hits the unit behind the tank much harder but if they're running double tank mimi isn't as good but this is a team you know I like Kokoro quite a bit, but she can re be replaced with Monica. Mage Killer team, you know, you run Kuka because Kuka's good at magical defense. Yukari for the, you know, M defense barrier. Monica for the stuns and the speed bonus. Tamaki for mage killing. And then Yui's just there to like top us, top us off. I mean, you could technically replace Yui with Akari, but honestly, Yui's a little bit tanky in the back line, so that's why I posted her there. Also, I copied the posi positions range and credits out, of course, to the official Discord. I dropped the link for the official Discord on the Google spreadsheets that I created, but pretty much this is just a copy. I do not take any credit for this position range for all the characters, so please feel free to note that this is very important because pretty much the character that's going to be at the very last slot they're going to be, you know, taking the heat from anyone who hits, like, mostly the backline, right? And Yui can take some punishment, and she's not an important character. So Aimo, she's good in the back. Next thing is going to be the Dream Team. Now, observing the teams in top 10, honestly, I don't want to use Reno anymore. And I want to use someone like, you know, Saren, or just anyone else. Just because of the fact that physical attack just doesn't seem to... It won't matter if you have a Miyako. Look, all right. So some of you are probably wondering, you know, we've been talking to this Google spreadsheet for a while. If you actually click the I right here and then you go, you can see the top 10 rankings. And pretty much I recorded the top 10 rankings and you can see Miyako is everywhere with Nozomi. And what is Miyako good at? Miyako is good at pretty much blocking physical damage. There was only one, and it was only Kami who used Kuka at the very number one slot. And that's probably because his team is more defense oriented. You can see right here, and we'll probably bring it up back up in the Google spreadsheets, that Tamaki and Kuka are here. Now, this is a very strong defense team because Tamaki will kill any enemy team Ayos, any Anas, you know, any Hatsune, so on and so forth. So she is super effective for any defense team, especially in the top 100 because almost everyone is running like, you know, some sort of like Hatsune or Ayo. I pretty much like did a little, I guess I counted who was like the most used. Hatsune, like seven people used her in the top 10. Miyako, seven people, Ayo, six people, you know, Nozomi, five people. A, a lot of people were going to use someone like Monica because Monica is a speed booster. But then again, it doesn't matter when you're defending. Because what happens when you're defending is you get a natural bonus to your speed. So technically, if you don't want to be faster, you can run, you know, just more DPS along those lines and be a little bit tankier. Honestly, the number one right now is Kami, as you guys saw earlier, and I think his team is definitely the best because it covers both defenses and healing and not to mention enough DPS to pretty much kill everyone. Not to mention he is at, you know, player level 79. But just to note, not all of his units are, you know, five star. That's kind of interesting to me that Maho and Tamaki are four star, but he's still number one, you know what I mean? He is still number one. Going over the like the next couple of things, I want us to observe that pretty much every single team will have either a Hatsune or an Ayo. See? Hatsune, Ayo. Hatsune. This was the only physical team 
This is the only physical team that I saw, and it was kind of impressive that it was in top 10, right? Shout out to Crave for being a trendsetter and using an actual physical team. All right, outside of that, then again, the trend continues. Hatsune, Ayo, Ayo, Ayo. Hatsune, Hatsune. Like, people are using the trifecta, if you know what I mean. Like, we can also look at it here in case you guys are wondering. Oh. No. Right there in pretty much the, like top 10, it was just, oh wait, no, I messed up a little, but I'll, I'll correct that. But pretty much Hatsune, Ayo, Hatsune, Ayo, Hatsune, Ayo, or Hatsune and Anna. But for this one, they use Reno, which is pretty cool because Reno is, you know, she's one of the units that I really like personally, just because she is a crit monster, as in she just generates crits upon crits but she will not be as effective without or P defense reducer, right? Or I don't like how it's only magic, but I like how pretty much people have caught on that magic is the most effective way. I am interested and I would love to do an interview with someone in top 10 and ask them why they're not using Monica as much. Like, I'm just curious why folks aren't using Monica because the thing is, is Monica can boost speed. Is more attack power better than speed? Not to mention Monica can, you know, has decent kill potential, but I am curious. So these are pretty much like my team build recommendations, like when it comes to free to play, budget, mage killer to the dream team. You can try also copying top 10 if you want. It seems to me that Miyako is definitely the best tank in PvP and you know, most of them, they have her at three star at bare minimum. And of course, we're gonna talk about this later, but why you want to reach top 10 is pretty much you get 500 diamonds, all right, or jewels. Talk about more about rewards and everything, but let's go ahead and do some PvP. I'm pretty sure this team is going to crush us right here. But we're going to go ahead and give it a whirl. This one in particular, because they have Anna and like three. They have like these two in the back, Suzune and Shiori. They have a chance of, you know, missing. So hopefully Yuki can make the miss. I won't run Yukari because that's kind of useless. We're going to run Rima and see if we can cluster them up. And we're not going to run her. We're going to run. No, wait, no. We're, we're, we're definitely going to run Susana. All right, let, let's see how this works out. I don't think I'm going to win just because their team has more stars than mine. And, you know, they have Anna. Anna's just an absolute threat. But my idea here is to cluster them, like, ideally. All right. Oh my god, I'm doing, like, no damage. All right, we got there. We just need, we just need Monica to do her thing. Take it, take it, take it in the face. Oh my goodness. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, all right. No, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, we missed. We missed. That's why you don't run these archers. They're so bad. They're so bad. Okay, come on. Yes? Yes? Oh, oh, we're so close. Come on. Okay, cool. Yeah, we barely won that. We barely won that. But pretty much that shows you why archers are not good. Because they can miss. Imagine if I didn't miss, it wouldn't have been as close. So yeah, I've reached higher ranks and stuff. We'll talk about rewards and how like jewels work. My highest recommendation for anyone who's starting out is to run a Monica and Kokoro. These are staples. And then of course, you know, feel free to run Miyako if you have her. Run Rima if you have her at two star because you saw how clustering was super important. It helped my Monica, you know, deal more damage because she got, you know, all of them within a little cluster and was able to AoE. But it's like those little things that can make your team a little bit better outside of just using someone, you know, like I'm just going to use Nozomi because she's the best tank in the game and Nozomi is just going to make things easier. Like, no, you can you can think about it a little. You can think about it a little. It's not like completely pay to win, but, you know, every arena is pay to win. Anyways, that's it for today's video. You know, if you have any more tips, Feel free to drop them down below. If I miss anything, you know, I always appreciate it when you guys educate me because I'm definitely here to learn with the Princess Connect community. Anyways, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we get 7,500 subs, we'll be doing a giveaway and I will see you in the next one.